So Ed has arrived. Ed has arrived. Here, show Ed his throne over there. I love a live show. So we are on live, Ed. Yeah, just, just come well, on in. Just to be real, because yesterday... Impressive. I drink a gallon of water a day. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yesterday, you. before Idol, we went through words you can't say on TV, and he had a very funny joke, which we can't make here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but it was, it was candid Ed Sheeran. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have, I, I have a like arsenal of dad jokes now that... Actually, I have one that I can say on air. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> what did the DJ call his son? What did the DJ call his son? I don't know. Eric. <laughs> Have you used that before and does it get a laugh every time? Not nice. really, no. Yeah. Uh, no it's definitely, good. That's definitely in the dad joke zone. Uh, yeah. Well, good morning. Good to see you What's again. What's going on? Morning. Yeah, it's nice to, yeah, nice to be here. Was Yesterday was time. really cool for me, man. I've never actually sat in a judge's chair on television. I mean, I've got, I've played the shows, you know, um, talent shows like that before. And in the sound check, I'll go and sit in the judge's chair and take a picture and be like, I, but I've never actually... <laughs> sat in a judge's chair before so it's like it's really nice there's such talented it's people amazing. though aren't i they? mean you know what's interesting ed is that and and if you've seen american isle this season you know if you haven't you know check it out because these are contestants that were i mean one was working on uh, machinery one was fixing an air conditioning not too long ago and there they are standing on that stage singing i mean singing your lyrics watching you who wrote those songs yeah watching them sing those songs but not only as soloists as duets and yeah. it was, and I asked you about it a little bit last night. But when you were driving away, thinking about that, what was that dynamic truly like for you? Um, I, well, I just, I, I don't listen to my own music, so I don't hear those songs like every so single day. What, how put, do you, you mean you don't? You as listen, in, like I won't just be in the car and put play on, you. yeah, divide and be <laughs> like, yeah. but uh, you know, I obviously play the songs every weekend when sure. I do these shows. But uh, seeing people cover them is so lovely because people always have a different take and spin on it. And I also, I was sitting next to Luke yesterday and he was showing me the cards of who they were and where mm -hmm. they were from. They're so young. They're so young. They're like young. 17 and 18. It's yeah. mad. I am like, a teenager and, and yeah. the, the country voice is really, really young teenagers. They're really, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really feel, I, what I was saying to them yesterday is like, whoever wins, it's obviously a big deal for whoever wins, but just to be at that point in the show where you're having 23 million people vote every week, that's such a great launch pad for them. They can just come off the show. Like the three people that came off the show yesterday can come off, heads held high, and walk straight into a career and just work for well, it. Well, you know, Ed was talking to them before the show, and I think that was the advice you were giving. You were saying, like, you know, you're here, you did, you did it. Like, you did something massive. Now it's what you do immediately after. Yeah. And, I mean, and not rushing. I mean, Harry Styles was, you know, he's arguably one of the biggest artists, well, it, the biggest artist in the world. And um, he came off a talent show yeah. and didn't come first. He you know? waited. Like, oh, you that's know? a good point. You know, and he, yeah. he's. He you think that was hard to wait? Or you think he knew what he was doing? Yeah, I think he knew what he was doing. He knew. Yeah, because like, like, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he learned how to play guitar. He learned how to write songs. And it, it, he's it become fantastic at both, you know. So yeah. I think it's it's good. Well, what a busy week it's been for you. Yeah. I mean, you've <laughs> you've had a lot going on in this week. Congratulations on uh, a great speech that you made. Oh, thank after you. Your yeah. court case I kind victory. of like, you know, the court case ended and then I went to bed. I was so shattered from the week and then I woke up and I was like, "Oh man, my album came out this morning." Yeah. I've got yeah. to promote yeah. it. And then I went to bed after that day of promoting it and then I woke up and I was like, "Oh man, my tour starts today. I got yeah. to get to Dallas." <laughs> and then I was in Dallas and I was like, Oh man, I'm an idol tomorrow. So I can please it, please relate. So it's been quite I'm kind of I was I was having a conversation this this morning about it. Like I don't know if I can actually like process anything that has happened in the last two weeks or the album coming, because everything's just happened like, really, really, really fast. Yeah. But I'm I, I'm loving that the record is out. People are connecting to it um more than anything I've ever put out before. It's like a weird it's it's a it's a weird one. Fans are being so connected to it, like so, so personally connected to it. And it's, is that, do you think that's because of the things that you're singing about that are really difficult personally for people at times? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I sort of put myself out on a line, like I, I don't, I've had things that I felt throughout my entire childhood and adult life, but I don't necessarily like talk about them. And then they all kind of came up last year through my friend dying or Cherry's diagnosis or being in the court case last year or whatever and writing about them felt quite raw for me and I was like I don't know if I want to release these because it's right. very um 
you know, embarrassing personal stuff. And then I think putting it out, people connect to it because it is feelings that people feel and mm -hmm. they don't necessarily talk about. So I think it's nice to have, I've, I'm sort of feeling, it's like a different lens on an album. Like I usually put out albums and they have like big pop songs on them that are the, the songs that drive people to listening to the album. Whereas this is, it's a different feeling. It's like a, it's a, an album that people will have for certain things rather than mm. like bad habits. When you're going out, you press play and you get ready to mm -hmm. it and then you go out and you might hear it in the club. <laughs> but this record just isn't that. It just exists in a different sphere and space. And Do you know, I found it interesting um, watching your documentary, Ed Sheeran with us now. Subtract is out and the Disney Plus documentary is out as well. I found it a lot interesting. I mean, I, as I said to you last night when you came for rehearsal, I've I've known you but not really known you, mm. you know. And I feel like just watching that, like I I know you. I'm, I I feel closer to you and understanding you and your songs even more. So it made me mm -hmm. want to go back and listen to everything. Yeah. Totally. Well, from thank a different you, point of view. Yeah, the documentary was a weird one as well because I kind of like. I'd made a documentary before. I did this uh, one on Divide being made called Songwriter, and mm -hmm. it's, it was all just me in the studio writing the songs. And that's kind of what music documentaries end up being. It's yeah. like backstage at a gig or like in the studio doing this or maybe on a photo shoot. And when uh, the guys came to me and said, we want to make a documentary on you, that's what I thought we were doing. I thought we were making a documentary like that. And through life unraveling, it just turned into this different thing. And now it's not a music documentary. It's no, a documentary it's a, about a lots of... Uh, Lots of other things. Well, you said in the documentary, you talk about you know, when does one become an adult? Mm. And I thought that was an interesting concept. Yeah, I feel like like kids, you sort of don't realize how, even as teenagers, you don't realize how uh, easy it is until you become an a adult and then things start happening. But heavy adult things happen to kids as well and to, and to teenagers. And it really made me reflect when I lost m my friend. Uh, it made me reflect on friends of mine that had lost their parents when they were like 10 yeah. or yeah. 7. Or, and I was like, that's when you became an adult? And we, yeah. we didn't we realise that. We didn't, we didn't realise at the time because we didn't get it. We were just, you know, you tried to be there for your friend. But it's, uh, yeah, it's but, like, I, f I feel like when, when heavy adult stuff happens at any point in your life, that's when you become an adult. And but, it might happen when you're 40 and it might happen when you're 4. It's you know? interesting to say if you have not suffered or, or experienced that kind of tragic loss with someone close or a family member, you don't quite understand it. And it's the same with having kids, right? I mean, you said totally. to me last night, I'm going to go call my kids yeah, before yeah, yeah. the show. Yeah. And and Ned said, do you have kids? And I said, not yet. It's a long story. <laughs> not um, yet. <laughs> but I think that's another thing. Like when you have kids, you look at things differently and you understand life totally. differently too, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that as life goes on, my lens is getting clearer i think you know you get less i think your 20s are just about figuring stuff out and making mistakes and i feel getting into 30s having kids going through loss going through like it just brings you closer to the things that matter to family and to whatever but but yeah i'm a uh, yeah, this is we're five minutes in. This is getting deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be that. Now that we've all seen the documentary, it's all going to be deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Ed Sheeran with us this morning. Subtract is out. Disney Plus, it's called yes. The Sum of It All. And the other thing, and we're going to take a break and come back. And I think you brought a guitar. Uh, I, right? I or, hope so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they said, I was going to say, well, what which song should we play? And they're like, I think he's going to play. I'm like, great. Oh. Um the other thing I really loved, because I advocate working hard and hustling, I really loved your persistence early on where you said, you know, some artists or artists might go out and play a gig a week. I'm going to play three a night. I yeah. love that. I, I was like fired up by that. I, I, I'm sure you're the same as, as this as well when you started out. But I sort of looked at myself and I was like, I'm not as good as other people um but i know that i can outwork them like i know like i know if i'm not the best guitarist or the best singer or the best songwriter the one tool that i have in my toolkit is that i can work really hard and that will be the thing and then through working hard like it would be the same for you and like or, like everyone in this in in this room you then become really good at the thing because you're doing you're it pushing all the time. so yeah it's um yeah, that that was basically i was just on a scene in london and every gig that i played there were people that were noticeably a lot better than me. And I was like, well, <laughs> i, I got to do something here. So, yeah, that was where the, but that's the, the thing you can control. You yeah. can control your output. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Ed Sheeran is with us in studio this morning here. And I was on my way into work yesterday and I was going down Melrose and all the shops are there. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful day yesterday. Yeah, gorgeous. And I saw these people lined up outside on Melrose. I'm like, oh, my gosh, there must be a sale. I wonder if there's a clearance sale or something in one of these great stores. 
I look over and there's no. a yellow building that says Ed Sheeran on it. And then I guess I missed it, but then you came up in the double decker bus, right? Yeah, yeah. Any sort of pop-ups uh, across the country. There's one in Boston, one in Chicago, one in Dallas that I did on Saturday, one in New York that I did Friday, and then yeah, I did uh, this yesterday, and it's it's fun. Like I haven't really done interactive fan events in you know years. I I remember like my first album, I would like tweet out, "I'm going to be here," and then you show up, loads of people right. come. But those fans who were like. 13, 14 then, and now like mm-hmm. mid twenties. So it's it's a different thing, like having this like pop up shop everyone comes to, and there's vinyls, there's bottles, there's all sorts <laughs> of stuff. Uh, and yeah, I just did a, a pop up gig yesterday, but it kind of has to be like organized chaos. Yeah, you, it you, looked pretty. You mess, it, you mess it out, but it has to be pre planned, like approved with police and stuff like that. So it's. And no how long one... did you play? Uh, I did three songs and then I came to you at, at well, Idol, yeah. By the way, you came to me and then we found out in that same moment that the King and the Queen were going to make a cameo on American Wasn't Idol. Wasn't that <laughs> random? Like, yeah, I was just sort of there and then I turned around and Lionel Richie's interviewing the King and I'm like, <laughs> this is like his first public appearance since being, you know, crowned. <laughs> He's on American Idol. This is mad. It was interesting, right? That's I pretty mean, awesome. Yeah. Like, it's definitely like... It's definitely meta, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know no, cool. I, I was. Uh, well, it was funny because they so uh, King Charles the Third, the coronation, mm-hmm. and the King and the Queen afterwards uh, throw a party. I guess last night, which was a concert. Katy Perry and Lionel Richie were performing at the concert. So in UK time, they had already performed by the time was we were going it on the air. Actually, live. So I was like, are these pre-planned questions? And they pre-recorded it because so then they the, said something that Alanis had said, and I was like, are they watching? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So they were live during the show. The must have been like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was like but then you two. see, I felt like the, it was like the fatigue setting in. Yeah, you know, yeah, as time yeah. went yeah, you by, could see. you were getting tired. Um, more, well, more yeah, tired. because um, with liquidation or what was yeah, the? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was the moment. I was like, I was like, they pre-recorded these questions, and Ryan's asking the things, and that's and, <laughs> no, and, they and then and, the same and, thing, yeah, though. and then uh, um, Katie said something, Alana said it, and I was like. Oh, they, they are, are watching. watching. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would have been way more smart. Was it fluidity <laughs> or yeah, yeah, liquidity? Yeah. liquidity? Liquidity. It was liquidity. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I didn't want to risk saying that on TV because I would tongue tie it. Liquidity is hard to say. <laughs> um, Ed Sheeran with us this morning. So they brought in your guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll... Wow, so uh, cool. We were talking about songs that we like. We did have a chance to listen to the album and the bonus tracks, which yes. you got to make sure you check out. And last night we were playing some of the music i don't call them music videos what do you call I, um, them visuals? I really i really appreciate that by the way i've never done a show that's showcased the album so much i was um, it was great to do and uh i was singing along to dusty and sisney what's one of your favorites colorblind colorblind the the first few lyrics of that song kaleidoscope love you just Thank hit you. us with that that phrase right there when you think about kaleidoscope love and then you say like forever changing like our love is like forever changing just like a kaleidoscope all the different colors it's just like Actually, I felt so very, beautiful i'm like it, wow and it makes me feel very inadequate about my thoughts like i can't <laughs> think, <laughs> i'm like wow exactly. i can't think of beautiful things like but that you is feel so, it but you feel it yeah. when you hear it right mm-hmm. no thank you well i was saying i just whenever i think of something like that i write it down in my notes and i just have loads and loads of phrases and and then uh, it grows from there well, or like I'll be writing a song and I'll just flick through my notes and be like, oh, that actually I'm going to work. Yeah, I'm going to use that today. But I had that. I had the chorus of Colorblind for years and years and years, but it was more just um, it, it was just going I without any words to it. It was just like hums. And then I sat down and finished it. But. And in the documentary where Ooh, you, you guys are sitting like, are you in your living room sometimes with the microphone and the recording equipment? Or uh, it seems like- in the dock, no, it was mostly like I was on tour as they so were filming. So it's like hotel. Yeah, I sort of, my my rule for the documentary was no kids and no inside my house because I didn't want anyone to watch it and like, be able be, to yeah be yeah. able to break into my house and yeah, know where make, things are yeah, you know so my so here's my, the safe <laughs> my rule was just um no kids and no inside of the house that's good rule. so in in the dusty video those are actors then playing yeah the so role. that's a girl who came and acted in uh the video i mean she was uh t- 10 i think and my daughter's three so it's very what were you good. making what was the batter uh, was it pancakes yeah it was pancakes yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was i was slightly distracted by the making of the pancakes yeah, when the we played that video right yeah it was a weird i was thinking because i yeah, just have a concept for a video. I, so I went to Mia, who made all the videos, and I was just like, for Dusty, I just want to make pancakes uh, with an actress <laughs> playing my, my, my daughter. And that concept 
will last for about 30 seconds so we had to find a way to extend it but yeah i think the um the videos were really fun to do i did like uh 14 videos in 16 days just like one after the other after the other after the was other. the water cold i really really <laughs> yeah. regret one it was your idea I heard. so yeah so so one writing an album that is so much water themed and two not saying because they said you know we can fly to LA and we can we can film the music videos there and I was like no no I want to be around my family so we're going to film in Suffolk in December in the North Sea so I'm standing there it's like two degrees and like we we had to have someone on site that was like taking my pulse between yeah, like, <laughs> like takes yeah keep and then alive. and then I did these photos with Annie Leibovitz and she came in in January and and she's like right the first picture I want you submerged in this lake in Suffolk in January, no. and it was just like uh, it's the coldest I've ever been. Yeah. Did you? Um, you had a wetsuit under your clothes? Yeah, not yeah. for the Annie thing. She no. wanted me. She wanted to show be very authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was carrying an anchor, dragging an yeah, anchor yeah, on the yeah, sand, yeah. and he's. Wet. I'm thinking this is like I'm gonna catch a cold watching. Yeah, it, it was very cold. I, I definitely regret the insistence of like, no, no, I don't have to go to Los Angeles because I look back on it and I'm like, I could have written an album about being in the Caribbean. And this would have yeah. been. Yeah. A lot of artists are inspired by that blue water. Totally. Uh, all right, so. You want to do eyes closed? Totally. Let's okay, do great. Ed Sheeran with us live. I know it's a bad idea, but how can I help myself? Been inside for most this year, and I thought a few drinks they might help. It's been a while, my dear, dealing with the cards life dealt. Still holding back these tears when my friends are somewhere else. I pictured this year a little bit different when it hit February. A step in the bar, it hit me so hard. How can it be this heavy? Every song reminds me you're gone, and I feel the lump form in my throat. Cause I'm here alone, just dancing with my eyes closed. Cause everywhere I look, I still see you. And time is moving so slow. And I don't know what else that I can do. So I keep dancing with my eyes, eyes closed, eyes. Oh, I keep dancing with my delusion is here again. And I think you'll come home soon. A word brings me right back in. Then it's only me that's in this room. I guess I could just pretend. The colors are more than blue, but I lost more than my friend. I can't help but missing you. I pictured this month a little bit different. No one is ever ready. And when it unfolds, you get in a hole. How can it be this heavy? Everything changes, nothing's the same. Except the truth is now you're gone. And life just goes on. So I'm dancing with my eyes closed. Cause everywhere I look, I still see you. And time is moving so slow And I don't know what else that I can do So I keep dancing with my eyes Eyes closed, eyes Oh, I keep dancing with my eyes Eyes closed, eyes Oh, I keep dancing with my they're shutting the bar, they're cleaning the floor Everyone is already home But I'm on my own Still dancing with my eyes closed Cause everywhere I look I still see you And time is moving so slow And I don't know what else that I can do So I keep dancing with my eyes Eyes closed, eyes. Oh, I keep dancing with my eyes. Eyes closed, eyes. Oh, I keep dancing with my. Wow. Yeah. Ed Sheeran live this morning before 9 a.m. Wow. Seamlessly perfect. That is effortless. So right? good. So I, just grabs a guitar and goes right into it. Why am I sweating? <laughs> like, I'm so wow. You're like, feeling it. I was uh, feeling yeah. it. We're going to get a quick break coming back with that. Hang on. Uh, you know, something, Ed, that I found interesting yesterday after you on American Idol, everybody kept saying this about you, and I, I don't want to embarrass you, and you've probably heard this before, but they kept saying, wow, he's so... They'd say nice, but they would say he's so down to earth. Mm -hmm. 
I find it interesting that people make a point to say mm-hmm. that people are down to earth, right? Because it just I, must mean that there's a lot of people. That well, aren't. that's that's what I was that's what I was getting at, right? And I think that there's a well, there's a there's a graciousness and a gratefulness that you carry with you. Is that how you grew up? Is that where's that come? And the groundedness, where's it coming from? I, yeah, I think it is growing. You know, making sure you introduce yourself to everyone and making sure you say thank you and please and stuff. I think that's like always been something that my parents have put in me. But I think the, I honestly think the quote unquote down to earthness comes from being British. I think in Britain, we're sort of if you're a successful start. I mean, anyone will tell you this from Harry to uh, Adele to whoever Mum- Mumford and Sons Coldplay. But you there's you're sort of told that there's nothing special about you 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 kind of underdog 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 and when you get successful it's like you get battered by by everyone <laughs> but there's sort of a pride in the in the in the insults basically mm-hmm. right. like, you're ours but also like don't you get too big for your boots whereas i think in america there's this um the american dream is 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 real and p- when people achieve things Everyone else looks at them and goes, well done, you achieved that. That makes me think that I can achieve it. Whereas in England, it's very much they build you up to tear you down. But if you stay on top for long enough, then you become a national treasure and everyone. Mm-hmm. everyone wow. likes. So Chris Martin's entering into that now where everyone's like, we love Coldplay and we love Chris Martin. But he's definitely had times in his career where it's been difficult uh, public perception wise in, in England. And I've had my fair shares of ups and downs of that. So I come over to America and I'm like, oh, people like me. <laughs> 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 yeah, I played like the Dallas Cowboys stadium on, on Saturday and I haven't played in uh, America in like five years. And I remember stepping out on stage for the first time and being like, oh, people still like me here. This is wow. Wow, cool. Cool. Oh, Whereas God. like, I don't know, there's, there's like a constant Do you think people thing. are not going to like you at some point? Is it- is that oh, well? I mean, at some point, careers slow down for for well, you, you and Cherry were talking about that over yeah, sushi yeah. in the scene, right? Yeah. In the documentary scene, and you were saying that at some point it slows down or the heat is less. Well, I mean, like Paul McCartney was in the biggest band ever, and yeah. eventually, it, it's you know, right. eventually it slows down. Mm-hmm. For, but she for asked you, how will you cope with that? And how do you? I mean, if that happens, like, well, you know, you're in you're in a business where uh, it like I write music for me, and if I didn't want to if I didn't care what people thought about it, I wouldn't release it. I'd just, right. I'd just write it for me and that would be... So there's a... It's it's a business of popularity. You're in a business of popularity. Like, people have to like you to listen to the, the radio show. Mm-hmm. People have to like me to listen to my, my music. So there's obviously... When that stops happening, it's like a, a shift of, like, have I done something wrong? Or right. do people... And I and it is, like... I was d- discussing this earlier as well with, with, with someone. It's like, f- you're friends with someone at school... And then your lives just grow apart when you're you're older. And I feel like sometimes it's that with a with a fan base, you know, like my fans who discovered me when they were eleven or twelve and now in their mid twenties and they might have different tastes in, in music now. And it's about mm. like it's about just making I make music for me and I put it out and I have to just accept that whoever mm. likes it likes it. And if people move on from it or people find other things that that that's fine too. You know, it's a I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like people b- will have listened to your show for however many years and there will be people that kind of veer away and then come back or people that have been with you the whole time or people that haven't listened to you ever that are listening to you for the first time mm-hmm. today and go you know what I like Ryan I'm going to listen to him tomorrow it's just like mm-hmm. that that's what a career is a career isn't just being on top the and entire time I, I feel like you, you know when when it's something that you love like I love this you love what you do and something that like I didn't do in front of people forever I did mm. it in my bedroom this right with the microphone you just you, you want to prove like, I want to prove every day like yeah. I, I get up and I turn on the mic and it's like I want to prove that I should and can be and here and it's crazy for people to listen to your show and think that because they're they'll look at you and be like you're Ryan Seacrest like you've been on top of the game for blah 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 but it is the the want and need to keep going and keep pushing it that I think keeps careers going mm-hmm. for you know long time it's a good thing sure. you also talk about your legacy and what you want that to be and I I love the fact that you take seriously encouraging young talent young people pursuing what it is that they want yeah. to pursue well I do you know, I wouldn't be where I am now if I hadn't have watched Damien Rice at a gig when I was 11 and met him in a bar afterwards and then wow. gone, do you know what? I'm going to pick up a guitar tomorrow and I'm going to write a song. So whenever I see kids, I'm, I'm, even if they have like one iota of interest in writing songs or playing music, I'm like, look where I came from, which is you know, tiny farming town in Suffolk. Like no one's made it out of my area. Like, like <laughs> and um, I did it. You know, I went to a, a normal school and I moved to London uh at 17 and i started on the gig circuit and i wasn't good and this happened so and i meet kids sometimes that are like like on the show yesterday the 17 18 year olds that are way better than i was at 17 so <laughs> if you think if they put in the same 
stuff. They're going to be far greater than mm. I've got to, you know, it's a, uh, I think it's just also reminding people that music is a real job. You know, mm. so many people said to me, like, you should probably get a real yeah. job to fall back on or go to university. And, you know, all those people now see my <laughs> job as a real job, whereas before it wasn't. But I think it's so interesting, right. the specificity in that moment where someone showed you you could do it, right? Or, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. when you gave the, the, the young boy a guitar in your in your hometown mm. um you know that specificity will change that person's life one person forever i wish i could show you that hometown <laughs> as well because that is it's so like people see england they go london but england is uh it's like looking at america and just thinking that america is new york america is mm -hmm. huge and there's mm. so many different things and yeah i if you ever have time come to ipswich well the bar <laughs> i mean i like the bar the bar seems cool yeah. where you just yeah, yeah. hang out that's that seems like exactly. a cool spot Thanks for coming, man. Great to see you Thank last you. night on Idol yeah, and this morning. Yeah, very good to see you. Continued it's great, man. Thank you so much for having and me. And happiness. Like, it's not lost on me that this is a, a you know a really great platform for you to allow me on. So thank you so much, and uh -huh. I'll see you next time. Yes. <laughs>